The train, for its type, is the most powerful vehicle on land. And the engines of Sodor are the power behind the docks, industries and branch lines that make up the world-renowned Northwestern Railway. These are the stories of Sodor. You may recall one of the many goals of BR's modernization plan was to dieselize the entire network. In the years since, thousands of faceless steamies were sent to scrapyards all over the country. Among these locations was Kildane, which did a roaring trade turning engines into piles of metal. Fizzling fireboxes. This is surreal. I'll say, to think there was a time when steam ruled the nation. Now look at them. Oh. I'm looking. When did they break him down? A few days ago. They'll do his tender tomorrow. Such a shame. Jeremy was a good man. Jeffrey. What? His name was Jeffrey. Oh, right. Sorry. Senior moment. Um, times certainly are changing. I know what you mean. Feels like only yesterday I was working on the Great Northern Railway. Then it was the London and Northeastern Railway. Now it's British Rail. Don't you mean British Railway? Oh, you hadn't heard? BR recently shortened its name to just British Rail. What? Why? I have no idea. I haven't tried to make sense of BR's decisions since 1955. Count yourself lucky you're privately owned. And I should get back to work before the owner sees me lollygagging. See you later, Horace. Henry. Right, sorry. Another senior moment. Good afternoon, Sir Topham. Good afternoon, Mr. Hall. My word, I have never seen a non faceless vehicle in such a wretched state. I'm amazed he's even alive. So am I, sir. I'm even more amazed how nobody noticed before Neil gave him a bump. What do we know about him? His name's Barry, and he worked around Norwich. That's on the other side of the country. How'd he end up here? According to the transfer records, he's been bouncing around scrapyards since he was decommissioned in 1958. What? He's been left to rust. For seven years? How the bloody hell was that allowed to happen? And who decommissions a non faceless steamy without cause? There's no shortage of names attached to the files, sir. I'm sure some are more accountable than others. I plan to hold all of them accountable. In the meantime, I would like to speak with Barry. Of course, sir. This way, please. Barry, this is Sir Topham Hatt, controller of the Northwestern region. Hello, Barry. Nice to meet you. You too, sir. Blimey. I always wanted to visit Sodor, but not like this. Understandable. Do you have any idea how you ended up in this condition? Last thing I remember was going in for some minor repairs. They gave me green water and I was out like a light. Next thing I know, I'm waking up here. Is it really 1965, sir? I'm afraid so. I don't understand. Why was I left to rust? What happened? I don't know, but I'm going to find out. And when I do, I will personally destroy the careers of the imbeciles responsible. Thank you, sir. What'll happen to me now? You'll be transferred to our workshop at Crovens Gate for repairs. Mr. Hall, make sure Barry is afforded every comfort. Absolutely, sir. Don't worry, Barry. We'll have you... You'll have me... Oh, sorry. We'll have you fixed up in no time. Mickey, get him ready for transport. Right away.
Can you repair him, Mr. Hall? Yes, sir. The reason I hesitated was because a thought crossed my mind. Do you remember our meeting about my special project? You mean Barry? I thought you wanted to test it on one of my engines first. I did, sir, but that would mean taking one of them out of service. Given how busy they've been, that might not be a good idea. And using Barry as a subject is? The one good lesson I learned from my uncle was to always seize opportunities, but a better lesson I learned from my father was to always ask before doing something. May I at least ask Barry if he's willing to undergo the procedure? All right, but you will explain it to him in detail, and if he says no, we will wait for another opportunity. Is that clear? Crystal, sir. What do you think? That might be the balmiest thing I've ever heard. What Steamy in their right mind would want to do that? This is meant to help Steamies, and if it works, it will. If it works. I don't fancy being used as a guinea pig, not after seven years in a bloody coma. Find some other chump. All right, all right. We'll fix you up using conventional means. That won't be a problem. I'm sorry for upsetting you. <sighs> you didn't. It's just... This is a lot to take in. I can't imagine. We do offer psychological services. Mickey is... Could you say that again? That shipment of parts you ordered has been delayed. How delayed? I don't know. Dispatch can't find them. Bollocks! If we don't do something soon, Henry will be dead in a day or two. Could we send him to another workshop? It's too risky to move him again. I guess we'll have to improvise. We can comb the scrapyard and pick out what we need. With all due respect, Rob, that does not sound like a good idea. I've done it before. How many times? Twice. Were they successful? The second time was. I realize it's not ideal, but like you said, Mickey, if we don't do something... Ugh, <sighs> Derek, get some trucks ready sharpish. We need to pay the scrapyard a visit. Oh, that's such a relief. You should have seen Emily. I think she was about to cry out of happiness. She won't be the only one. <sighs> Using salvage parts to save him. Genius. This Mr. Hall sounds like a clever chap. Ugh! You disagree. No, no, I just remembered I meant to ask him about his father. Rob said he used to work for us as a guard, but didn't mention his name. Does it ring any bells with you, Edward? Well, there was a porter named Gregory Hall who worked for us on the LNER. Mr. Star sacked him for gross incompetence. After that, he became an angry drunk whose wife disappeared under mysterious circumstances. Despite all that, the council
also allowed him to adopt his nephews. Why would he need to do that? I understand their parents died. I don't remember how or what their names were. All I know is Hall moved away with the boys not long afterwards. Now that I think about it, his brother-in-law might have been a guard for your group, and I do remember one dying back in the day. What was his name? Ugh, this is gonna drive me mad, and I dare not ask Rob about it. That might be for the best, but if that was him, he's done well to carry on despite such tragedy. How's he doing? Stable. The lads say he could stay this way for several weeks. Fortunately, he won't have to. Dispatch found those parts. We should get them tomorrow. Here's hoping. And I'm sorry for downing you, Rob. No need to apologize. It was a flip of a coin if my idea would work. Excuse me, Mr. Hall. Please, Barry, call me Rob. All right. Rob, can I talk to you? Of course. How are you doing? Fine, I'm eager to get fixed up though, and we'll get started the moment those parts arrive. About that, I want you to test your idea out on me. You do? Can I ask why you've changed your mind? To be honest, I said no because I didn't think you could pull it off, but watching you save that chap using scrap metal, I now see how good you are. And like you said, if it works, it'll help out steamies everywhere. Maybe then they won't end up like me. In that case, I'll inform Sir Topham and we'll proceed from there. Thank you, Barry, and good luck. I'm pleased to say the procedure Barry would undergo was a complete success. I'm also pleased to say Sir Topham got to the bottom of how he ended up on Sodor. At the same time he was undergoing repairs, a faceless member of his class was also present. This engine had been decommissioned, and somehow its paperwork got mixed up with Barry's. Since BR was in a rush to scrap its steamies, nobody double-checked them. Fortunately, the names of everyone involved were clearly marked on the files, and true to his word, Sir Topham decimated their careers. As for Henry, his repairs would go smoothly. He was laid up at the works for many months, during which time Donald covered for him on the main line. I wish I could say his crash was truly an accident, but it wasn't. They found evidence the track had been tampered with. Unbeknownst to us at the time, the culprit was the same one who killed Jeffrey. Despite the harm he had already inflicted, he still wasn't done with Sodor.